Hi guys, Mrs. Elke here. Today I was playing with watercolor geodes, which is super fun. Um, here's an example of one that I bought for my girls when I went on a trip. So it looks like a rock on the side and then bam, you got these fun layers of colors in there. So I wanted to play with making a watercolor version of this today. And I used an extra long sheet of paper, but this is what I came up with, okay? Super fun to play with. And the secret ingredient is salt. So you can use any kind of salt. Um, I think I was using kosher salt for mine, but table salt works just as well. So you can even experiment with different kinds of salt. So grab your watercolor, grab your salt, and get ready to try this fun project, all right? Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe below. All right, enjoy. So I'm using a number six round brush and the color Viridian Green. And I'm just getting it kind of watery and wet. This is kind of the outline of my shape here, my geode. And I'm trying to kind of keep it wet, and then while it's still wet, just drop in a little bit more of the color um, to make it richer in some sections, a little bit more vibrant. And notice I'm not trying to paint it in too much so that it kind of just sits and plays in that water. And again, just kind of trying to get, especially the outside edge, a little bit darker, a little bit more vibrant by adding more of that Viridian Green paint color in to the edges while it's still wet. As long as it's still wet, that paint will just kind of play around in that area. It'll swim in the, the water. So now I'm going and starting the second shape inside. And notice that they're not touching each other, so I wanted to kind of leave some space in between. And then while that shape is still wet, again, I'm kind of going in and adding a little bit more of the dark, the Viridian Green. So I'm just not using as much water. I'm going and dipping my brush right in the paint and dripping it in to the area while it's still damp. I'm gonna go ahead and make another layer of this. This time I added a little bit of a lighter green too. It's called Permanent Green Light. These are Shinhan watercolors that I'm using. And the same thing, I just kinda of got it wet. I am adding a little bit of Viridian Green to that one as well. And then now I'm adding the center with a darker Viridian Green. Um, I'm using less water, more paint. And I'm even dropping in some Prussian Blue which mixes really nice with the green, getting that really nice and bold and strong. Now I'm taking some salt, this is kosher salt, and sprinkling it onto any of the wet areas. And the salt just kind of sucks up the dryness. I'm now going in and filling the spaces in between my first layers that I did. And for this, I'm using some Prussian blue mixed with some Viridian green. I don't want to get so blue that it looks like super striped, but I do want it to be a noticeable difference kind of between the layers of color. So in a similar way that I did the other layers, I'm just getting it wet with the blue and kind of filling in those areas. And then while it's still wet, I can kind of drip some brighter or more a deeper color into that wet area and some of it is even mixing with parts of my other layers that weren't quite dry and that's okay I don't mind if they kind of bleed together in areas I don't want it to happen everywhere but in some areas it kind of makes it more interesting so I'm adding another layer here you can see some of my colors are bleeding together which is just fine Again, Prussian blue and Viridian green mixed. And just trying to kind of fill in all of the, the shapes in between. And kind of dabbing at it. I am kind of brushing across some of the salt because um, it kind of sprinkled into some of those areas, but it's not a huge deal. Now for the outside edge, I'm using a mixture of like a brown and my Prussian blue. I'm pretty sure it's a Van Dyke brown. 
and brown and blue mixed together can create some really nice rich darks that aren't black um, but just vibrant and rich so I am doing that for the outer edge because I want that to be a nice strong bold color kind of framing in the geode so I'm going ahead and doing that all the way around and trying to make sure that it's kind of a varied line. It's a little bit thinner, thinner in places and thicker in places, not too perfect, because this is kind of from a rock. I'm also adding a little bit of that dark on some of the inside areas too, but it doesn't have to be quite complete. It can be kind of broken or like a rugged line. And if it blends or mixes with some of the stuff around it because it's still wet, that's okay too. I do want to really emphasize my center because I do want that to be the darkest. So I'm going in and darkening the middle of it with that color as well. That's the blue and the brown mixture. Although in the center, I'm using a little bit more of the blue than the brown, but going in nice and dark and rich. If I happen to go over some salt, it's not a big deal. The salt just sucks up the dry or some of the wetness of the paint and can leave behind these like crystal looking things. It looks really, really fun. You can use it for a lot of different um, painting, watercolor painting techniques. And this is just one of them. So have fun with the salt and play around and see what it does for you. Here I'm just kind of blurring and blending some of the colors together, maybe darkening some areas, really just a lot of playing. So once my paper is completely dry, like I walked away and came back, let it dry, you can take all the salt off and you can see the effect that the salt had on the paint to give it some of those really cool um, texture like marks and yeah so i'm just wiping it all off rubbing it all off trying to get it smooth and there you have it masterpiece